I really hate the word problematic. What does it mean? Why shouldn't some things be problematic? Why does every problem require fixing and only progressive people can fix the problem? Problematic is like when the dials on the nuclear reactor indicate that everything is fine, but you notice that there's a lot of smoke coming from the reactor. Like, that is problematic. But the fact that some kid's game has beholders in it that are evil, that is problematic. Like, that, that is where you want to develop your progressive energy to fix. Go feed the homeless person, you sick fuck. Why are you doing this? Honestly, what progressive ideology has gotten to is when someone gets to influence a kid's game and they claim that they are saving the world, like systemic racism. Like, do you understand what these people are doing? Like, they are fixing systemic racism by interacting with the kid's game. I don't think there is a higher level of fart sniffing than this. Like, these people, they go in and they'll... And then all the media goes next to them and it's like, oh, oh, such an excellent person. You're an excellent person. Excellent, excellent. You're a very excellent person. This is like uh, disgusting when you look at it. And th these are adults playing children pretend games. It's like, let's pretend that you're saving the world by changing Dungeons and Dragons. And the only thing they're changing is removing stuff. Like, they're removing stuff from their game. They're not adding anything to it. They're just removing it. As if the game like, is bad, but if we remove things from it, we will make it perfect. And by the way, they're never saying that the game will be more fun. They're never saying that the game is actually going to be better. No, they're saying that they're fixing systemic racism. So if you're a black person in America right now, living in a trailer and bad things are happening to you, have no fear because the people at Dungeons and Dragons, they're on the case. They will fix systemic racism and probably get tens of thousands of dollars doing it because this is a cottage industry. Like these chuckleheads are making money hand over fist by pretending to fix your troubles. Right? You don't even need to vote Democrat. Look, if you're a black person, listen to me. Don't vote Democrat. You don't need to because Dungeons and Dragons will just Fix systemic racism. I mean, the, the whole platform of the Democrats is to fix the systemic the systemic, systemicism, isn't it? Right? So, so like Dungeons and Dragons, they have you covered. Wizards of the Coast. My God. So I already made a video about this. Like, I already explained what I think. I think uh, fantasy games, especially like Dungeons and Dragons, the whole racism part is the core aspect of their game. And that's a good thing. Number one, it's fictional. Okay, it's not hurting anyone. Number two, it shows how people can get together despite of the racism. It's like how you get the dwarf and the elf to work in the same party. How, how do you get races that hate each other, like uh, the dark elves and the elves, work together in order to combat a common threat? Uh, it makes for interesting drama, makes for interesting storytelling. How does a orc who is in a party get treated by other humans that are NPCs and that are racist towards it. It makes for very interesting storytelling. And a lot of people say, well, you know, of course you can homebrew your campaign. But that's not the point. Like, the point is, like, number one, I feel dirty when I give these people money. I don't like giving money to fart sniffers, like people who work for a kid's game and think that they're solving the world. Secondly, I don't like giving money to people that hate me. Because just by disagreeing with them, just by pointing out that the emperor has no clothes, they hate you. So why would I give money to them? And number three, you would expect that the company would actually enrich the lore. Like, I, I, I want them to actually make the story better. I want them to add things rather than remove things. So that's why I'm upset. It's not, it's not the fact that, oh, well, you can homebrew. Of course you can homebrew your campaign. But, like, I would expect that whatever they're putting out new stuff, that it's actually good. So, uh, I missed a couple of sanitization, and by the way, like, they're, they're just mind-blowing when you read them. So, Beholders, they no longer have the lore that they used to, because it was problematic. Again, what the fuck does problematic mean, and why it's a problem? Now, Beholders used to constantly fear for their safety, and any creature that isn't one of their minions would get the ire of the Beholders. They might react favorably towards creatures that humble themselves before the Beholder and present themselves as inferiors. 
but it is easily provoked to attack creatures that brag about their accomplishments or claim they may be mighty. Such creatures are seen as threats or fools and are dealt with mercilessly. Each beholder thinks it is the epitome of its race and therefore all other beholders are inferior to it, even though at the same time it considers other beholders to be its greatest rivals. A beholder might be willing to cooperate with adventurers who have news about another beholder's lair or activities and might be non-hostile towards adventurers who praise it for being a perfect example of a beholder. So, you might be wondering, what the hell does this have to do with racismus? The answer is nothing. Uh, this is about mental health. You see, this is something that progressives do time and time again. Like, they champion a cause, but instead of, like, knowing when to stop, they reverse reality. So, what, what I'm trying to say is, like, look, yes, like, people with mental health issues normally aren't violent. It depends on the mental health issue, of course, right? So to stigmatize a person with mental health is not okay, but to think that every single person with mental health is definitely not going to be 100%, they're not going to be a danger for other people is reversing reality. Because yes, like you know, there are a couple of mental health problems that people who are suffering from them may be a problem, and the left believes this. For example, toxic masculinity. Like they believe people like toxic masculinity is a mental illness. There are articles about it now. And they consider that people who suffer from this mental illness are a danger to society. Homophobia is a mental illness, according to certain psychologists. White rage. Yeah, there was uh, the, the general, the, the minister of defense, I believe, from the United States came out and talked about white rage, right? So Another mental illness, which is... A, so, so it's not like they don't believe that there are certain mental illnesses that might be problematic as they consider. I mean, it depends, right? Like, it's from a case-to-case -case basis. In the case of the beholder, it is an excessive level of paranoia mixed with the excessive level of inferiority complex or, well, superiority complex, right? These things are not positive traits. And yes, like it, it can be very difficult to live or, or to have a boss that has these personality traits. I mean, imagine if you're in a relationship with a person that has extreme paranoia and they want to check your phone, they want to check your Facebook, they want to check your social media because they constantly think that you're cheating on them, right? So this is something like the person may have a problem, but that doesn't mean that it's not a difficult task to live next to them and, and to live with them. And, and in the case of Dungeons and Dragons, this causes very interesting drama. Yeah, like you're a group of adventurers and you meet a beholder, which is one of the more powerful monsters in D&D. &D, and there's a way to get around that. Like if you know about beholders, if you have a wizard in the party and he rolls a really good intelligence check and knows about the monster, he can be like, oh, just, just do what I do. It's like, oh, you mighty beholder. Oh, we bring news from a beholder from another castle. Yeah. Hey, but but I guess we can't have that anymore because it's problematic. Oh, it's problematic, so you can't have it. Uh, giants are problematic because they deal with slavery. So this is something that happened throughout human history. Everyone knows it's bad, but for some reason you can't fight evil anymore. Why can't you fight evil? Why? They, they, okay, so giants capture slaves and they sell them for ransom. So, so it's problematic. Okay, but I want the paladin to go in and to handle business. Like they need to handle business with the giants. And by the way, it would be interesting, like what would happen if a party of adventurers goes to fight off the giants and enslaves one of the giants, takes them as prisoners, just to show them how it feels like it to be on the other side. And, you know, like this, this causes drama, this causes interesting storytelling. Oh, no, we can't have that. Not to mention the fact that it's also interesting if the party members themselves get captured by giants. And they can create a slave uprising and they can free the slave. Look, look how interesting, and like in just a couple of seconds, I thought about a couple of scenarios that would create drama and they would be enjoyable to be played. But no, it's problematic. Oh, it's problematic. Okay, if it's problematic, fuck me. I don't want to be problematic. Oh, like, can you understand just how powerful I can be? I can create systemic racismus. By, by playing a kid's game with some other people in a closed environment. 
It's honestly, it's like the same like the Christians, you know, getting war on people who cast spells. It's like, oh my god, we, we got witches over here. Why did they do witchcraft? They, they influence our community. Gnolls have little variation in personality and outlook. They are collectively an elemental force driven by a demon lord. The only real opportunity for interaction with them is uh, provided by the cultists that sometimes accompany a warband. The, human, the, the humanoid rabble might have information the characters need or could even be former friends to the worship of uh, Yed Grohu. So the portrayal of a gnoll that is more intelligent or social than issue, usual, you can give it characteristics similar to the cultists. Yeah, so, like, again, they don't want to have evil races. And I'm really curious, like, uh, are demons still considered an evil race in Dungeons and Dragons? What about the angels? Are they still lawful good? No, it's probably Shades of Grey. It's probably that they're going to stab you in the back at any point, and the demon is going to become your friend, right? Social justice writing at its finest. I gotta say, I really love the in Pathfinder, where you get to realize that the angels are actually lawful good. I mean, they were so cool. Like, they were awe-inspiring. They were inspiring people with valor, and they were leading by example, and they were genuinely like a lawful good race. Say to you fiends, flee, for you will find no mercy here. Forge onward to your enemy champion and have no fear. The warriors of heaven will keep the monsters from your back. The hand of the inheritor. Damn it all! You'll answer for this some other time! Save and I gotta say, I, I was a little bit surprised because when I grew up, I used to live with a lot of these good versus evil type of stories that I was a little bit bored by them. So then you get like stories that have shades of gray and they're interesting. But now, like, every story is just cynical and filled with shades of gray. I actually like a story between just good and evil. It's so refreshing when you finally get to see it. And apparently, we're probably not going to get to see it here anymore. Because all the races, they're, uh, they're complex. Look, even the Mind Flayers are complex. Like, the, the thing with the Mind Flayers was interesting. It's like, you got a race of creatures that require to eat another sentient brain to survive. So... You know, it's arguable if they're evil or not. I mean, are humans evil for eating cows? But for a mind flare, you know, like, he can't survive unless he consumes another intelligent person's brain. So, yeah, like, from the perspective of other races, yeah, they're, they're very evil. But no, like, you, you can't have this anymore. Oh, God. So, uh, it is what it is, you know. I, I don't have high expectations from D&D anymore. I, I think the quality of the game is going to go way down. And, and it's not because of, like, the wokeness. Because you can homebrew this. But I'm thinking, like, the new game that's going to come up. Like, if they're go going to make, like, Dungeons & Dragons 6 or whatever. It's going to be really boring. Like, it's not going to be fun. And the mechanics, I'm thinking. Because, like, people who just remove stuff aren't capable of adding stuff. Like, I, I have... Absolutely no faith that these people are talented enough in order to pull out the Dungeons & Dragons 6. Let me know what you guys think, though, and I'll see you in the comment section. Take care.